Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth McCravey, a website designer and business coach for entrepreneurs and your host for the Breakthrough Brand Podcast, the show that's all about pulling back the curtain on how to actually build a successful business. I don't skim the surface around here. If you want a deep dive into the nitty gritty details of what it takes to run a successful business and stand out in a crowd, you're in the right place. After creating a multiple six figure a year website design business in my 20s, I'm ready to share everything I've learned and everything I'm still learning because I believe the keys to building a thriving business should never be a secret. Here you'll find episodes that are actionable, direct, and fun, like friends chatting business over coffee and a fresh, honest take on the reality of being an entrepreneur. If you're ready to master online marketing, branding, website design, mindset, and business strategy, then this is the podcast for you. It's time to build your breakthrough brand. Let's do this. All right, friends, so it's that time of year where we are all goal setting. And today I'm sharing one simple strategy that I use to create new habits in my life in a more little by little sort of way. We're really also going to talk about like habits versus goals and how we can work towards both. So this strategy is simple, it's powerful. And I think this episode will be the motivation you need as we move into a new year to really go after the goals you have and create new habits and change for yourself in your life. So basically not just getting all excited about a goal on December 31st, but actually carrying it out as the year goes on. So this is a recast of an episode that actually aired around 50 episodes ago. It was episode 98. Um, So it aired at the end of late at the end of 2020. um, So a while ago now, and you guys loved it then. And I think we can all use this reminder again, whether or not you listened to the episode and originally aired. And I actually just finished re-listening to this episode right before sitting down to record this, um, this morning while packing up boxes in my house, which I will get to in a moment. And I realized as I was listening um, that I really needed this advice myself and I actually felt motivated like listening to this again. Um, and a funny thing, as you listen to this episode, you'll hear me say like, this is what I do right now. Um, and it was for a while, but life with a new baby it does not leave much room for some of the things I'm talking about. Um, like hilariously, I literally laughed re-listening this morning because at one point I talk about how, oh yeah, I typically get like eight hours of sleep a night. So like, you'll you'll see why I talk about sleep, but I was talking about that. And that is not the case right now. Right now, um, last night, I was up every one to three hours all night with a newborn who is going through the three to four month sleep regression, which is just lovely. Um, But it's a season, right? Um, But anyway, that's like not my life right now. I'm also not doing things like intermittent fasting because I'm breastfeeding and that's like... No, that's not that's not a good combination. You're not supposed to do that. So anyway, it's a season. But I'm very excited about the new year. Um, and if you're listening to this, it's actually already 2022, which is so crazy. Um, I'm recording this still um, as we close out uh, 2021. But anyway, I'm very excited to be entering back into a season of my life that can have a little bit more structure now that Colin's getting older, and that I can set some habit goals in my business and for my personal life too. So like, I just now, again, listen to what you're about to hear. And I'm also racking my brain for like, what habits do I want to be forming in my life in the new year in 2022? And I want to share a little life update before I get into this episode. Um, That's what's happening right now, live, not the recast version. Um, But a little life update. Adam, Khan and I are all moving, like literally in the moment you are listening to this, I'm probably about to be moving the next day. I think if I'm thinking about our moving dates right from when this is airing, Um, and we're not moving away from Tennessee or even away from the Nashville area, but we're moving to Franklin, Tennessee. So just down the road from where we live now. And again, the week this airs is the week I'm moving. So it's going to be probably craziness. I've never um, moved with this much stuff. When we moved our house originally from our apartment, the house we live in now, um, we actually sold the furniture we had mostly and started fresh. We also just didn't have that much in it to begin when we were living in a two bedroom, pretty small apartment. And now we have a lot more stuff that we're moving and we're moving with a who he'll be four months when we move, but yeah, with a new baby. So if you want to see what's happening, I'll share some of that on Instagram. Um, I'm at Elizabeth McCravey, but we feel really excited to start our new home and get settled in there and with a new rental that will be our old house. So we're keeping the house we live in now, the house I'm currently recording this podcast in, the house we love so much, our first home, we're keeping it as a rental property. Um, So it will actually become our fourth 
rental property and we'll be listing it to be filled with a tenant in January. And we might already have a tenant by the time this airs. I, I feel like our house will, will go quickly for that. But yeah, we're moving to Franklin. And if you're familiar with Tennessee, then you probably know Franklin rocks. People really love it for a reason. And when we first moved here, the apartment we lived in was pretty close to now where we are buying our house. And we just love that area. And for three years now, we've lived more in Nashville. And now we're going back to the suburbs, basically. So that's what's going on with us in this crazy season of life with a new baby and moving to a new house. And it's a little chaotic, but so beautiful and special. And I know I'll like always look back at this season with so much like cherishing the moments. I'm already missing things constantly of like missing when Colin was even just like a week younger because he's changing so much. So anyway, that's what's happening right now. Um, That's my update. Now, without further ado, enjoy this awesome recast episode all about habits. So here it is. I got this method, I guess you'd call it, from Jesse Itzler. So if you've heard him speak at an event or heard him interviewed on someone's podcast, you might recognize this. Um, He's the one who I learned it from and I've adapted it to my own life and like have so many takeaways from it. So that's the perspective I'm going to be sharing with you guys. But I do want to say definitely listen to him interviewed on a podcast to hear him talk about this as well, because it will get you fired up. Um, So the, the concept is he teaches adding one new habit to your life a month, and then typically skipping maybe like two months throughout the year where you're just refining what had already been added. So by doing it this way, at the end of the year, you have 10 new positive habits in your life which sounds amazing, right? With this way of doing goal setting, you're not just saying at the beginning of the year, hey, I have these 10 resolutions. Instead, you're taking it one month at a time, focusing on one singular thing, carrying it out and then compounding it every month. So like once January is over, you don't ditch that January habit. You still have that habit as you go into February, but February has a new habit you're focusing on growing. So it's really cool. So one thing I wanna clarify here, just so we know, What we're talking about, so habit and goals, those are different to me. I think we use them interchangeably sometimes, but we all know they're technically different. So to clarify, I think of goals as something where there is an end in mind that you're working towards, a specific outcome with like an end date or end accomplishment that makes the goal over. So once you get there, it's done and you have to set a new goal. Whereas a habit is something you do in a specific interval of time, often. It's something that is recurring in your life life. Um, Habits can be both positive and negative. We hear all the time about how, you know, we can create negative habits that we need to break. What I'm talking about here is mostly adding positive habits every month, but you could also actually be um, each month having a negative habit you're trying to break by creating a new positive one, Um, whatever you want to do it. But as an example, a goal might be something like running a marathon, right? That's a goal where there's an end in sight, a specific maybe date you're running it. Um, and then once it's done, you ran the marathon. Whereas a habit might be that you want to be someone who runs three times a week. And you know, maybe your habit is that you run on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you run two miles every time, you know, whatever it is, that's a habit because it's recurring. And there's really not an end in sight. It's just like, that's the way you are being I like to think of habits that way as well, like a way of being It's an identity, really. So you could often take whatever the habit is and say, I am someone who does this or I am a blank, like I am a runner could kind of be a habit in that way. So again, you can see with that example, habits are what get us to the goal. And most goals are met by doing micro changes, one small decision at a time and creating and committing to habits can help us get there. So like I said, for most of 2020, I've done this, not most of about half of, I guess I'd say, I can't really remember when I started doing this but focusing on one new habit a month. And Adam, my husband, also did this with me, which was really fun. So we both would always know what the habit the other person was working on, and we could kind of hold each other accountable to each other, even though this whole year we've never done the same habit at the same time, because we always have like completely different um, goals and interests and things like that that we are working towards. So I already mentioned this, but I just want to clarify one more time that the idea here is that the habit continues on. I'm about to give you guys some solid examples of this, but basically like the habit you work on in January, you'll keep it up in February when you add another habit to your life, you just keep it going, which the cool thing about that is that during the month, you're forming the habit, that means you can go slow and deliberately 
to truly make it a habit. It's not like some crash diet where you're trying to survive it through a, for a few weeks. You're trying to change something for good instead, which really is a totally different approach. When you're like saying, this is something I'm working on that's going to be a long-term thing for me, you really do approach it differently than like, this is something I have to do for two weeks. This is something I just got to like grit and bear it through for one month or whatever it is. So I have an example for you guys from one of the first months I did this actually. Um, that I think is a really good example of this. It is a health related habit, but you could totally do this for your business, for your personal life in any capacity, does not matter. And I'm going to give you guys some ideas to implement as well. But here's the example, intermittent fasting. So I wanted to form the habit of being someone who regularly did intermittent fasting. Um, Every day basically was my goal, but excluding weekends, unless I wanted to do it then. And obviously, like, still living my life. So like, if someone, you know, is asking me to go to a breakfast date at 6am, and I want to eat breakfast that early um, and break the fast sooner, that is obviously fine. But intermittent fasting is something I've done for years, kind of on and off, but never really made it a true habit. And really, a lot of times I was doing what I said in the example of like, oh, I just got to do this for one month, you know, versus making it a habit. And I've read so much about all the benefits of this. Um, I know I feel better when I do it, when I have a longer break, that giant break when you're sleeping and then before bed and in the mornings without food and giving your body and your digestion a break. I knew that made me feel better. So it was something that was important to me. So I wanted to form the habit of being someone who did intermittent fasting. So if I were to have treated it like a crash, doing this for 30 days kind of thing, then what I could have done is go all in on day one and be like, today I'm doing a 16 hour fast or an 18 hour fast or whatever, like really high number I want to do. I'm just like, I'm going to do it with willpower. And what would probably happen in that case is that I would get burned out on the whole thing pretty quickly, decide it's too hard. Um, I'm really hungry when you're not used to doing that all of a sudden to like wait six 16 hours with eating, which of course, some of that's when you're sleeping, if you don't understand intermittent fasting, (laughs) just to clarify that. Um, But that might feel like a whole lot, right? You get burned out quickly, and it feels really impossible. Um, So instead, the way I do it is because I'm forming a habit, again, not a crash course thing. I started it with a 12 hour fast for the first few days, I decided 12 hours is how long I'm going to fast, which really, when you consider that, like most nights, I'm sleeping for eight hours, that's like two hours on either end, basically. So really not that much, but kind of getting me used to it used to paying attention to it. So I did that for a few days. And then I did a 13 hour, then a 14 hour, and then I hovered around 15 to 16 hours um, for my fast after that going forward. But for about the first two to three weeks, I was working my way there and getting myself used to like the not snacking at night, waiting longer to have breakfast in the morning, figuring out, um, you know, what coffee made sense for me not to feel like I'm breaking my fast because I'm one of those intermittent fasting people who totally still has coffee in the mornings. And I think that is okay. That is certainly okay by me. But anyway, kind of figuring out some of that sort of stuff. So I did that for about the two, the first two weeks of it. And interrupting this episode with a suggestion for the small business owners listening. Ever wonder what you should do for healthcare when you and your spouse are both self-employed so there's no work provided health insurance to participate in? Well, when my husband Adam joined me in the entrepreneurial job space over four years ago, we joined Christian Healthcare Ministries instead of getting traditional health insurance. And it was the best decision for us, especially in these years of growing and raising a family while also running multiple businesses. CHM is a health cost sharing ministry and is a faith-based alternative to health insurance. We did tons of research before choosing CHM. And if you know me and Adam, you know, we are all about doing the math when making big or small financial decisions. And even though it's not insurance, CHM shares 100% of eligible medical bills, which is more than the typical 70 or 80% of medical bills paid for by insurance companies. All sharing is determined by the CHM guidelines, which you can check out before and after joining. And for the mamas and mamas to be listening, you truly cannot find a better healthcare option for maternity care. I had a vaginal delivery and a C-section and birth center care and hospital care between my two pregnancies and births, and it was all 100% shared for. And outside of birth, we've had our share of emergency room visits and procedures as a family, and those costs were all shared by members at Christian Healthcare Ministries, leaving us only paying our monthly contributions. 
option. CHM is less expensive month to month than insurance, and because there's no network, you can choose your care with whichever providers best fit your family. I seriously just cannot recommend Christian Healthcare Ministries enough. You've got to check them out. Go to elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM for more information. Also putting that link in the show notes, elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM. Now back to the episode. By the end of that month, I really did feel like I had formed the habit of intermittent fasting. That was something I did. I honestly didn't even have to think about it quite as much. And so now months later, because like I said, this was one of the first like habit things I did after starting to do this. Now, most days I do intermittent fasting without much effort. It's just naturally what feels good to my body now because it's a habit. I don't have to track it a lot. I don't have to pay super close attention to it. Oftentimes, I actually don't even know how many hours I fasted. That's actually true of me this morning. I know I probably um, did not. I know I did not do any late night stacking last night. So I probably stopped eating by like 730 and then didn't eat breakfast today till like 1030. So it just kind of like naturally happens for me now. Um, and it took making it a habit, not a fast, quick fix goal in order for me to get there. Okay, and if you're like, I want another example, here's another example for you. Another habit I focused on actually, I guess one month ago now, was to take on the identity of being an early riser. If you heard my podcast, I did a few episodes back with my husband, Adam. He lovingly told me a funny thing about me is that I think of myself as a morning person when I'm really not. And that's because I definitely am like an aspiring morning person, or I have been many times in my life of like, wanting to be able to be someone who gets up at like 5 a.m., but really being someone who gets up at more like 6.30 or 7. So anyway, um, that was one of my things, one of my habits of taking on the identity of being an early riser. So the way I did that over that month was I started by aiming for like 6.30 a.m. every day, no exceptions. I did things like setting multiple alarms, prepping my coffee the night before so I can just press a button and then I have fresh coffee, which is definitely motivating to help get me up, Uh, making sure I'm going to bed early enough that like, like it actually makes sense to, you know, get up before then. Cause like, let's be real. If you're staying up like crazy late, you're not going to feel like waking up early. Um, and then I worked my way a little earlier and a little earlier gradually over that month. And now I get up earlier than I did before. It still varies for me sometimes. This is honestly a habit I'm still working on, but it's there. And now I'm more like a 6 a.m. person versus like a 7 a.m. person. And definitely even more so, I would say consistently, possibly more like 5.45-ish. That was what time I got up this morning. So there you go. There are two examples for you. So now I want to walk you through how to implement this yourself. You have some examples, you have the concept down. Um, Here are some ideas for implementation. So to start, as you've been listening to this, you've probably already thought of some, but maybe jot it down in your phone, mentally say it to yourself as a reminder, draw it in a notebook, whatever. But what habits do you want to form in your life this year? Um, Again, no matter when you're listening to this, if you're catching me like halfway through 2021, or if you're listening to this at the beginning of 2021, whenever, when you look at yourself 12 months from right now, what habits do you want to be part of your identity? What do you want to be able to say, I'm a person who does this? Um, Whether that's in your business, personal life, relationships, like the way you do finances, your health, like literally can be anything. But what are some habits that have come to mind for you as you've listened to this episode? And again, if you're listening at the beginning of the year um, or at the end of 2020, it can be easy to get super ambitious, um, a little note for you here, and decide, um, yeah, Elizabeth, I thought of, you know, all these habits as I've been listening to you, and I'm going to do three habits this month, you know, go big or go home. And while that might work for you, an encouragement I have for you right now is to focus on one. You can kind of have the other two maybe in the back of your mind if, say, let's say you came up with three, but I encourage you to focus on one. And And that doesn't mean you don't have other goals at the same time and other habits necessarily, but just one thing you're truly focusing on changing. And if that sounds like, no, I really want to do two, I really need to do two, then what I would say to that is you could do one for your personal life and one for your business. But I didn't discourage you from doing like three things for your business, three things for your personal life and stuff like that. Um, As an example, when I did the intermittent fasting habit, I worked on plenty of other stuff that month. I had plenty of goals in my business and different things I was working on. It wasn't like my whole life revolved around figuring out how to do intermittent fasting, like actually the opposite. It was definitely a busy month. 
month for me. Um, but I was focused on that being a habit. And that was the one thing that I'm like, this is a new habit I'm forming this month. The other stuff were goals I was working on. But again, the habit formation thing is different. It's more long term. It's something you're taking on the identity of. So try for this one month, just one thing for the month. And if you have a ton of ideas for things for other months, jot them down for later, you can totally do them the next month, and then still practice pieces of it for for the month we're in right now. So like, do again, use my two examples, like if you really are like, yeah, I want to do intermittent fasting, but I also love to wake up earlier, make one of them the goal, but then still focus on the other one. You know, one's the habit you're working on, the other one, it's something that's kind of in the background. So here are your exact steps implementing this. First thing, pick the habit for the month, <laughs> just pick one, um, or pick one for personal life, one for business, if you really just can't can't pick one. The second step, figure out how you're going to measure it. This is super, super important, because if it's not measurable, then it's going to be hard to tell if you're actually doing the habit or not. Basically, it needs to be like super clear. So what exactly is the habit? If there is there a pattern you're going to do to get to get it there. So for an example, let's say the habit and we're like, here's a business example. Let's say the habit is that you want to show up on Instagram more for your business. Like maybe right now, you don't post very much and you just let it go on the back burner, but you want that to become a focus of what you're doing. Ask yourself, what does that actually look like for you? Does that mean you're doing a story every weekday? Does it mean you're posting to your feed or posting a new reel five times a week? Um, you know, kind of identify what does that look like and then make a game plan. So maybe the first week, you're just going to try to do stories twice, like just show your face on stories twice. And then after that, you want to do it three times a week, you know, after that four times after that every day, like whatever it is, progressing from there, but make sure you know what it is. So that at the end, of the day or at the end of the week, you're not like, did I do that habit or not? Like you need to be able to know either yes or no, I did the habit or didn't. Um, and another way to like phrase this too, again, I want to give you guys as much like tangible examples as possible. So I'm going to go back to my intermittent fasting example. But like, as I had mentioned, I gradually like worked up to going for longer. But then even after that, once I've kind of set into like, this is just what I do now, I have like a lens I look through to decide like, did I do it or not? And for me, it's like I I want to do at least 12 to 13 hours. That's intermittent fasting to me, which again, 12 hours is not that much. That just means you're stopping two hours before bed and waiting, you know, two hours in the morning or, you know, three hours before bed and one hour in the morning, like however you want to look at it. Um, but for me, it's like that is intermittent fasting to me. If I do longer, that's great, but I want to at least do that much. And most of the time I am doing longer than that, but that's like the number I kind of keep in my mind to measure it with. So that's an example for you there. So that's the second thing, figure out how you're going to measure it. The third thing, figure out what you need to get started and get started right now. Okay, like just get started right now on this. Um, so the question is there research that needs to be done something that you need to purchase a plan you need to create, write it down, figure it out, add to your to do list, um, whatever you're needing to buy, um, or do and make sure it gets done. Do not put this off and keep waiting. Um, if you know, you're listening to this before a new month, and you're really excited about it, go ahead and get started now make the plan and then get started today. There's no reason to wait until the new week, the new month, whatever. Okay, fourth thing, tell someone, tell someone what your new habit is. And seriously, this one is so transformational, I think, to this whole process. So tell your spouse, your roommate, your business bestie who maybe listens to this podcast with you. I know so many of you, I love it when I get messages like this, but say that you have a group of business friends where you guys all listen to the show. And um, I can't remember who it was, but one of you guys actually messaged me and said that you and your business friends were all going to be listening to the 2020 marketing and trends predictions, or sorry, 2021, that episode and discussing it together, which I just think is so fun. So if you have someone like that, a friend who also listens to this podcast, tell them what the habit you're working on is. Tell your spouse, say, hey, I'm trying this new thing this year where I'm going to do one habit a month. This is the habit I'm working on right now. Just want to let you know, can you hold me accountable if you see me like not doing this, <laughs> you know, uh, so telling someone and then uh, the fifth thing to take it a step farther, create accountability in addition to telling someone. So with intermittent fasting, a fun thing that happened when I was creating that habit is that my mother in law and I were doing it together. Um, and she she wasn't doing the same format as me of like creating one habit a month, but she wanted to start doing intermittent fasting. She was also new to it. So we did it together. We texted about it a lot and we used an app 
app that I can go ahead and tell you guys the name in case you're curious, but it's called, I think it's called the life app, but it lets you track your intermittent fasting of like when you start and then turn it off. And like how, it, that's how I actually kept track easily of like how long I was doing it. So you can set like a fasting goal of like 14 hours, 15 hours, whatever. And if you have a friend on there, you can have what's called a fasting circle, which is pretty funny. But we did that and would like track each other's stuff. So we could see like, you know, she's over here doing 14 hours, I'm doing 13. And we can kind of see and cheer each other on. So that was really fun. It was super helpful. So with that, is there someone in your life who might want to do the same habit with you for the new month? Ask them to join in and maybe even send them this podcast episode so they have context for what you mean when you say you're, um, that's the habit you're focusing on this month. Give them a little, a little context by sending them this episode. So that's it, you guys. That's how I do this. A new habit every month to help you achieve your goals. And as we close out, I mean, this is the last episode I'm doing of 2020, which is so fun. And I think this is a great note to end on. But I have a little bit of just like last words of encouragement for you as you set goals and habits. So remember that getting where you want in life is done in teeny tiny decisions. It's one decision here, another decision there that gets you closer or farther away from where you want to be. And so when you look back at the end of the year, what you achieved or didn't achieve, you can often draw back to little decisions you made. Um, You know, a decision that's towards the goal here, a decision that's away from it here. It's all little decisions. And most of the time, it's really inconsequential, boring decisions. Um, Sometimes boring decisions you don't want to do or aren't fun. They aren't cool. They aren't like something really awesome to post on your Instagram. Um, Sometimes they're scary. Um, and decisions that make you nervous, but it's all little decisions um, that really get us to where we're going. And again, I want to emphasize that of like, they're often boring decisions. Like seriously, look back right now at something you're really proud of that you accomplished in 2020 or a new habit you created. So as we're talking about habits or a goal you hit, if you think about how you get there, you probably did some really boring things that no one saw that got you to that goal. Little decisions. Decisions, like I said, here and there are what take you to that dream. So it's all about decisions. So as you set goals, as you think about this new habit, focus on decisions, saying yes or no to things moving in that direction or this direction. And don't just let yourself spend your life in indecision mode where you're like, I don't know what I'm working towards. I'm not sure what to do. I'm just going to sit here and kind of idle in place. Make a decision here, make a decision there, this way or that way. And I think something that's really helpful for me when I'm feeling like, maybe progress is stalled a bit or um, unmotivated even, something that really does help me is to make a decision to make a decision (laughs) is really the best way to say it. But deciding for myself right now, I'm going to make a decision about this. I'm either going to decide to go to the gym right now I'm going to decide to stay home and work. Like, I'm not going to be in this in-between of like, should I work out right now? I don't really know if I feel like it. I kind of want to, but it's raining. Like just making a decision one way or the other. And then once you decide taking that as a commitment to yourself, having your own back. Um, I believe I talk about that in the episode that uh, aired last week about scheduling your week on a calendar. Having your own back is huge for your success, you guys, you got to make the decision and then hold yourself to it. Um, Really a blessing for your future self when you do that when you make a decision that benefits yourself later and actually stick to it. So there's my little rant to close us out, (laughs) make decisions, decisions are what get you where you're trying to go. So I hope this episode is huge for you. And I hope you try this new habit formation idea to help you achieve your big dreams for the new year. And here's my call to action for you. Like I said, share this with a friend who you might want to join in with you. And I would also love to know what habit you are going to set to go with this. I'll be sure to post on my Instagram account the day this airs uh, where you can message me and comment on the post. Or if you missed that, feel free to send me an, uh, a direct message on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you. But please tell me, like, what's the goal, um, the habit that you're going to set for this first month that you're going to start doing this? Again, even if you're listening to this way into the future, I want to hear from you. What is that habit you're setting? 
What's your game plan? And how did this impact you? Um, And yeah, again, share this with someone who needs it. Okay. Love you guys. Peace out of 2020. (laughs) I hope you have seriously such a beautiful new year celebration. And I hope too, that you're taking time off right now. If you're listening to this live um, to do reflection on your business and your life for this year, taking some rest and time to be with family. And I'm excited to see you guys in the new year. All right. Bye for now. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast and all the way until the end. I appreciate you being here. And hey, if you enjoyed this episode, then I want to encourage you to check out my website where you'll find tons of resources to help you grow a profitable and sustainable business. Over on elizabethmccravey.com, you'll find free workbooks to help you figure out things like the best headline for your sales page. There's a freebie with my favorite journal prompts to start your day with, a guide on website essentials for all you coaches, and so much more. And you'll find my top business tools. Yes, I literally list out all the major ones for you on my website, and there are tons of special discounts and offers for you guys to snag as you try these products and services. You'll also find the main ways to work with me. First, through my Show It website template shop that helps you DIY your way to a strategic website for your business. These website templates are easy to use. They're gorgeously designed and they have all the strategy I'm teaching on this podcast just woven into them. And I have a feeling you'll really love them. You'll also find my course and coaching program for designers, Booked Out Designer. In this program, I teach you everything I did to build an in-demand design business so that you can create a thriving business for yourself as a brand or website designer. So with all of that interests you, go to elizabethmccravey.com to access those tools and free downloads. Head to the tools page at elizabethmccravey.com slash tools. And to see the different ways to work with me, simply click over to the ways to work together page. I hope you have so much fun exploring everything over there. And don't forget that you can subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening so that you never miss an episode and leaving a rating and review for the show, um, sharing it with a friend, sharing it on social media are all great ways for you to support this podcast. Thanks so much. And I'll see you again next week.